Most of us know that vitamin D is important for the regulation and uptake of calcium into bones. But vitamin D is much more than that. It's a potent steroid hormone that helps to regulate the transcription of over 900 genes via interactions with the VDR receptor. Together with another receptor called RXR, the VDR can regulate transcription via activation or repression of various target genes. Vitamin D can be synthesized from cutaneous cholesterol upon UVB exposure or sunshine and has many different effects on the body including playing a role in biological processes. These biological processes include growth, development, antioxidation, and overall homeostasis of the body. Vitamin D is also very important in regulating the immune system. Vitamin D, after being metabolized into its biologically active form, or vitamin D3, bound to the VDR receptor and RXR receptor, can initiate gene transcription and exert its immunomodulatory effects. Both environmental triggers such as insufficient sunshine exposure and genetic factors such as VDR polymorphism or mutation could contribute to a poor vitamin D status. Vitamin D deficiency has been shown to be prevalent in multiple autoimmune diseases such as MS, type 1 diabetes mellitus, and the most for common form of lupus. Because the vitamin D status is highly associated with the risk of autoimmunity, vitamin D has been implicated in the prevention and protection from autoimmune diseases. Therefore, it makes sense for people to take supplemental vitamin D, especially those with any kind of immune issues and those who are not in the sun much. It should also be noted that as we get older, our ability to synthesize vitamin D from sunshine decreases. Thus, it's even more important for older adults to take supplemental form of vitamin D. Recent evidence has also correlated that people who were hospitalized from COVID-19 had very low levels of vitamin D3. Could it be that the older population and immunocompromised people who were hospitalized from COVID-19 were unable to beat the virus simply because of their low levels of vitamin D3? Or is it the case that people with vitamin D receptor polymorphisms are unable to utilize vitamin D and therefore are more susceptible to immunodeficiencies? I'm sure there's more to the story than that, but ensuring proper vitamin D levels are kept among the entire population can be a start to preventing many major health disparities. As for vitamin D polymorphisms, there is a need to know who has these genetic mutations and perhaps gene editing technologies like CRISPR may be able to mitigate these disparities in the near future. That's all for today.